ESO fam. Today we're gonna look at some tips and tricks for new people coming to ESO. Or maybe you haven't played in a while and you need a refresher course on how things work in ESO. And I have some knowledge I'd like to share because I've played it quite a bit over the past year and a half. And I have been getting a lot of questions um, from my community and friends. So I thought I'd just make a little video about it and I can let you know about all the things I wish I knew when I first started playing ESO. So hopefully this can help you out too. So first I'm gonna show you a little bit about where quests are located in your game. So when you hit J, you will see your quest journal pop up. If you wanna find it quick and easy without searching the map and getting lost in the map, cause the map can be confusing sometimes, then you hit M once you're selected the quest you're on and it will show you, they'll, they'll light up You'll be able to see where the quests are, where you need to go to complete those quests. Next thing is way shrines. All right, so way shrines are these things. They look different in every area. This is the new Western Skyrim designed uh, way shrines. You're able to teleport between way shrines for free. Like you can go here, no problem. So it's just a good fast travel way to get around. If you're in an area you are lost and you want to just get back home to turn in a quest or something, go to your map and if you've discovered that way shrine, you are able to teleport back to it. But it does cost gold. So just keep that in mind. If you can find a nearby way shrine to teleport between, it is better because it's free. But if you really just want to get out of somewhere easy, quickly, and you have some extra gold to spend, just do that. One other important thing about ESO is that everything scales. So you can start at level one in Greymoor and play with your level 50 friends. Doesn't matter what level you are, where you play in the game. Uh, they they changed the game from when it first launched so that now over the past couple years, it's been like this where you can go anywhere at any level, play with anyone, everything scales. It's super great to uh, hook up with your friends and be able to play together, right? Also, there's no servers. You're either on NA or like EU. So you don't have to worry about joining a different server than your friend. You can play any race, any class, and still play with your friends. The only difference is factions. Factions, you cannot play in the same PVP mode as different factions. So keep that in mind if you are doing PVP. If you're mainly only focused on PVE in the game, then don't even worry about it. So one more thing about guilds. So you can be in five guilds, which is neat. So you can have a different guild for trading, different guild for for raiding, uh, trials, uh, dungeons. You can have a social guild. You can have a selling guild. You can have whatever you want. You can be in as many as you want, up to five. <laughs> and it's account bound. So you're able to get added on, one, on your account and all your characters will be in those guilds. So yeah, here's a bunch of different guilds. The great thing is, in this game, you're able to browse different guilds directly in the game and search for guilds that have stuff that you want from a guild, right? So there's trading, there's PvE, role-playing, social, um, PvP, questing, crafting guilds, all that. You can see their, their motto, their info, their story, all kinds of stuff. Once you've chosen some guilds to join, you can apply and get invited to the guild with this whole guild finder system, which is really nice. Once you hit like 100 members in a guild, you can have a guild trader, not a guild trader. Sorry, guild trader is is expensive and hard to do. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Uh, a guild store is what you want to look for. Um, our guild has it, the Broken Pirates. And it's basically an in guild auction house where you're able to post things and sell them and auction them off to members of your guild. Another thing I'd like to go over is the different things you can do in this game. Um, from dungeons to end game. So you can do dungeons at any level basically, but as you level up, you'll get access to unlocking more of them. The great thing about how Elder Scrolls Online works, like I said earlier, is you're able to play with anyone of any level. If you go under a group, you can go to Dungeon Finder. Actually, you have to be level 10 for your first dungeon. I'm sorry, I misspoke about when you can do your first dungeon. At level 10, you'll be able to do that. <laughs> and you can queue for your role, healer, tank, damage, queue for it. I recommend finding some friends to queue up for because sometimes it can take a bit to find a group, especially if you're only a DPS. So make friends. This game is better with friends. You'll want to do your daily dungeon. 
your daily dungeon will offer ton of XP, like tons of XP, and then um, a satchel that you'll get that has like crafting supplies, some gold, and some other random food and goodies. So you definitely want to do your daily dungeons. Veteran dungeons are harder, like heroic dungeons, right? If anyone's played WoW. So these are meant for people level 50 plus, and some can be unlocked after a certain number of champion points, and some can be unlocked via DLCs that you had to buy and stuff because certain parts of ESO are locked behind buying the DLC or buying the expansion to go along with it. So yeah, that's about it for dungeons, uh, the basic ones. The next step up from, from veteran dungeons would be trials. Trials are something that can be done on normal or veteran difficulty for higher rewards or higher uh, CP, which is champion points, which I'll go into next. <laughs> this is basically the end game content for ESO. It is a 12 player raid, basically, and they're in different areas. You can do them all over all over the world. So there's a leaderboard ranking system for the trials, which kind of gives people a more competitive edge. If you are into that, you're able to kind of see your ranking and your ranking is determined by a lot of things i think the time that it takes the amount of death so if you're doing trials you don't want to die a lot because it lowers your ranking score there's something called a vitality bonus system which i'm not sure 100 how it works because i personally haven't done trials myself because last year we had almost gotten enough people high enough level to be able to do them then it just kind of all fell apart because it happens you know mmos <laughs> but hopefully this year we can actually get to getting some trials done from what I hear, they're they're a great experience. They're a lot of fun. And they each have a repeatable quest once a week. So this is something you can do weekly with your friends. And you get a reward coffer for completing it one time each week. There's also a harder mode difficulty if you are up to the challenge and feel like things are too easy. Where it makes the dungeon like really, really hard. But that has to be manually activated inside the dungeons itself. Now, talking a little bit about that. You don't want to do trials right when you hit level 50. You want to wait till you're about 300 CP, which is champion points. So we're going to we're going to talk about what are champion points next. So these are points you get after you hit level 50. So it allows you to customize and strengthen your character beyond the max level, which makes it really cool for people who play a lot and feel like, you know, they get bored of making alts. You can just continue leveling one main character and get tons of champion points. These champion points are neat because you can actually use them on any character once you've obtained them. You get one character to level 50 and then after that you start earning champion points when you do quests or complete anything in the game. And then those points you are able to then put into a brand new character at level 1. So say you want to start and quickly level up an alt. You are able to do so and pretty much every time you level a new alt it's going to get easier and quicker. It's pretty neat that they offer that because sometimes the, the grind of an alt it can be annoying to some people. I personally love questing and, and just grinding different characters and learning different things. So I don't worry about rushing to get anywhere. I do like that you're able to do that for the people that enjoy playing game MMOs like that, right? The maximum CP is 3600. So that's a lot, but there's a cap at 810. So anything past 810 is purely cosmetic. And just to kind of show off that you've played a lot and your character has been around a long time or whatever. Because you can only put a certain amount of CP in each tree of the constellations, basically. So, you know, you want to make sure that you get to 810, but after that, you don't really have to worry about getting any more. All right, another thing I'd like to show to you guys, if you're new to the game, the stable. You'll see this type of symbol around most major cities. So basically you want to talk to the stable master once a day because you are able to upgrade your speed, stamina, and carrying capacity. And once a day for 250 gold, you're able to do that. Uh, maybe initially you might need a couple days to get that gold or just ask a friend for some help. But you want to come back to the stable master every day because carrying capacity is huge, especially if you're not getting uh, ESO plus, which is an awesome way to improve quality life stuff uh, while playing ESO, but it's not necessary to play the game. Me, I love hoarding things and looting everything, so I have to pay for ESO Plus. That's just me. And the, you get some crowns and bonuses for having ESO Plus. I don't say that you need it to enjoy the experience of the game. 
There's a couple different ways you can increase your carrying capacity as well, in addition to this, but this is the easiest and cheapest way to do it. If you do it every day, you can get a maximum of up to 60 more inventory slots. So two months, you'll have the, the maximum amount, and then you can put points into speed or stamina if you like afterwards. Another thing that you should be checking whenever you're running around is bookshelves. These are, these are great little lore books that you can or don't have to read if you don't want to. They can be interesting, they can be funny, but the big thing about them is sometimes they will honor you a skill point just for looking at them. But if you just look at the bookshelves all around you whenever you're, you're visiting a new building, a new dungeon, a new area, I would recommend reading every bookshelf so that you can get those extra skill points just for for running around and doing what you were doing anyway without having to get sky oh i almost forgot sky shards we cannot forget sky shards guys okay so if there's one add-on that you download it's called sky shards because you need to know where these sky shards are because sky shards are what allows you to get more skill points see how this says zero out of three sky shards these can be found throughout the world and if you get three, you get one extra skill point. So in addition to the bookshelf thing, this is the best way to get a bunch of skill points. And you can just even run around different areas, farming all the sky shards in the area and getting a ton of extra points early on if you really want to. So it's just something to keep an eye out for. They usually look like a, a crystal with a blue light popping up out of it. I don't sure where any of them here and I don't have my mod on, obviously. Sky shards are cool. Highly recommend you uh, pick up any sky shard that you do see when you're exploring the world and yeah that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and let me know what you think and i'm excited to play this game with a bunch more of my friends explore what western skyrim has to offer thank you guys for tuning in and i will see you guys online join our guild broken pirates at anatlus a-n-a-t-l-u-s if you want to add me in the game and ask for a guild invite we are looking to grow our guild and have a great time. I'll be streaming this game fairly often and doing some more YouTube videos as I see fit. But yeah, ask me questions. I'm not a pro by any means, but I know the basics and, and I hope this video will help some of you guys who are struggling or brand new with the game and want to understand it better. Because once you understand it better, the game does get better. Once you learn how to play a game, you learn the tricks and stuff, then I feel like more people will enjoy the game. So I just want to help. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in Greymore. Let's go. Bye.